everybody, I'm Jack Flyer. Today I'll be reading Chapter 3, A Date with Destiny, from my book, The Diary of Jack Flyer. Um, if you could hit the like button, and anyone that hasn't subscribed, if you could please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. This is all I've got going on at the moment, so let's get into it. Chapter 3, Date with Destiny. December 21, 1981. Black Betty is all ready for tomorrow. Just going over the plan in my head, but feel more confident after the flight with Sammy. We'll avoid any bunny hopping and just fly after some taxi runs. Old Charlie arrived this afternoon with his quicksilver. Sure as a contraption with wires everywhere. Looks a bit flimsy if you ask me. We enjoyed a couple of beers, but Charlie kept smoking all my winnies. Ate all the snags and left me one biscuit. Sure was a sight to see the two planes, though, all tied up next to each other. We had a barbie between them, and I admired their beauty. December 22, 1981. Morning started at 3.30am, or well, my morning anyway, as Charlie didn't get up till 4.30am, the slack bugger. I went over Black Betty with a fine-tooth comb more than five times before I felt she was ready. We decided Charlie should go up first in his contraption and check conditions, as forecast was for five to eight knots southerly. Anticipation was killing me as Charlie fired up his Kawasaki engine. Sounds great, I must add. He taxied through the gate to my aero paddock, where the windsock stood limp. He gave me the thumbs up and opened the throttle. His plane took to the air almost instantly and climbed out quite steep. Amazing. He levelled off at an estimated 300 feet and began circling the paddock. He then came down low, levelling just above the ground and performed a flyby with a steep climb out at the end. He then manoeuvred his plane to assume a sort of hover in the air as it appeared from the ground. I felt so excited watching how simple Charlie made it look and my confidence was now bursting at the seams as I waited for my turn to meet my destiny. He made a few more low passes and like before, he made a very slow gentle landing I was so impressed with his flimsy contraption in which I had secretly doubted in its ability to perform at all. So the time was now, do or die. I did one last check over my bird, put my helmet on and climbed into the cockpit. I was shaking with both fear and excitement as Charlie pulled my starter rope. Several pulls later, she fired up and once again I admired her smooth hum. I slowly taxied out to the strip for the intended taxi runs. With my heart beating furiously and my palms slippery with sweat, I lined up the 1300 metre paddock strip, had one last look at the windsock, then opened up the throttle. I pushed the stick forward and let the tail raise. Then I held her on the ground with light forward pressure, continuing to build up speed. A quick glance at the airspeed, 40 knots, and, and, stuff it, I'm going for it. I eased back on the stick and then, all the rattling stopped. I felt a smoothness. And I was flying. I let her climb at 40 knots. And when I felt I was around 300 feet, I leveled off and eased back on the throttle to hold her at 45 knots level cruise. I couldn't believe it. I was flying. I screamed out loud with delight. I'm flying. I'm really flying. I'm the king. I'm the bloody king, I tell you. I continued flying straight and level until I met the boundary fence where I now had to make a turn. I eased the stick left and pushed a bit of left rudder as she began a gentle turn. Her response was positive and I felt very much in control. A perfect coordinated turn was achieved and I then flew back to the paddock and made another 180 degree turn to line up with the runway I had marked. I dropped the throttle and nosed her over and she slowed almost instantly. I continued feathering the throttle to keep her at 40 knots as I made my approach. I told myself repeatedly, Stay calm, stay calm. You got this, Jackie boy. You got this, Jackie boy. As my heart raced at the sheer terror I found myself now facing. I cleared the fence by about 50 foot, then killed the throttle and dived slightly at the ground. I yanked the stick back and leveled her, but was still some 20 feet high. So I eased stick pressure, and as she started sinking, I gave her a burst of throttle and leveled at five to 10 feet, then I killed power again. I let her drop and, and gave her another yank back, she hit the ground and bounced back up. I threw the stick forward as the ground fast approached, yanked it back again, and again she bounced as I held full back stick. 
She bounced a few more times before settling and rolling to a stop. I switched her off and jumped out in the middle of the paddock, screaming how masterful I was. I couldn't stop screaming. I couldn't help but give old Charlie a huge hug and his reaction. So you want to do some formation flying? <laughs> I had to decline as the adrenaline was now taking hold and I felt it was better to quit whilst I was ahead. Charlie again took to the air and I watched him enthusiastically as he performed some tight manoeuvres and I also reflected on my first solo flight. At present, I have no voice left after all the screaming. As I have two weeks holidays coming up, I will continue my flying and hope to fly with Charlie next weekend. Doris won't watch me fly, she's too nervous, but I'll change that. Anyway, I'm still feeling the adrenaline. Even five hours later, two shots of whiskey and four beers. Now all I can think about is my next flight.